Welcome to Art of the Americas test review. The test will include one short essay, an actual AP question based on the new curriculum. These are the works and the subject is the presentation of time. And I'll give you one more hint. Think about what important change takes place for this culture between the creation of these two works. Yes, there will be matching questions on the test, as well as a significant number of questions from the review quiz that is also up on Moodle. The questions from this source are tough, I know that, but the explanations are helpful, not just for these questions, but for the entire unit. Several of our global prehistoric works are actually indigenous art of the Americas, so we decided to revisit some of these questions. August was a long time ago, and the May exam is approaching fast. We looked at this work back in Unit 1, but it's from Mesoamerica, right? What was the likely function and meaning? What material is it made from? Also, which of our prehistoric works do and do not show stylized animal figures? That's another question you've seen before. This prehistoric work illustrates a concept central to many indigenous American cultures and one that Miss Jacobs emphasizes. What other prehistoric work also shows unusual faces? That is, a similar content. It's another recycled question. Obviously, I'm not going to try to repre repeat your presentations. This is a very quick dash through dates and cultures, just to help you keep the chronology straight. Chavan de Wantar is one of the only two BCE cultures that we cover in this unit. The other is the Olmecs, and we really only look at them in the context of the Aztecs. The Old Temple dates from around 900 BCE, which makes it later than New Kingdom Egypt, but earlier than Archaic Greek culture. What was the function or purpose of this complex? Why was this particular geographical location probably chosen? There's a very helpful short video about Chavan de Wantar and the Archaeology Channel, and I put the link up on Moodle because I think it's a particularly confusing culture. The anthropomorphic Lanzon Stella, with its feline head and human body, stands at the center of the old temple. Worshippers would encounter it after navigating a labyrinthine maze of tunnels. Imagine seeing it emerge out of the dark. Note that here again we see a mixture of human and animal features combined in a complex and visually confusing style that intermingles figures. Remember what that style is called? Okay, I'm giving an answer away, a reward for watching the review podcast. The image on the upper left is also from Chavan de Wantar, although it's not a required work. <coughs> Excuse me. Note that the image changes when it's flipped upside down, but there's still a clear image. I flipped our required image as well, just for fun. Contour rivalry is most associated with the works of Chavan de Wantar, although it shows up in modern geometric art as well. The feline on the lens on Stella is almost certainly a jaguar, a repeated theme in Andean and Mesoamerican art. Here, moving from the top left clockwise, you see a jaguar warrior from an Aztec codex, go shamanism, a row of jaguar heads at Chavan de Wantar, and the jaguar throne from the Mayan site of Chichen Itza. And here's what Wikipedia has to say, quick, agile, and powerful enough to take down the largest prey in the jungle. The jaguar is the largest of the big cats in the Americas and one of the most efficient and aggressive predators. Endowed with a spotted coat and well adapted for the jungle, hunting either in trees or waters, making one of the few felines tolerant of water, the jaguar was and remains revered among the indigenous Americans who lived closely with the jaguar. All major Mesoamerican civilizations prominently feature a jaguar god, and for many, such as the Olmec, the jaguar was an important part of shamanism. Remind you of any other animals you studied? How about oryx? Lions, bulls, birds, dragons, likewise share the jaguar's ability to thrive in very different environments. We only encounter the Olmec indirectly through the Aztec veneration of this small mask, but it's viewed as the mother culture of Mesoamerica. Note the cleft in the mask's head, echoed by the two temples at the top of the Templo Mayor, where it held a treasured spot. Here we, again we see an expression of duality. So what was the mask made of? Where was it found? And what does Aztec possession of this mask indicate? Yuxchilan was one of many Mayan city-states, notable for its remarkable carved lintels depicting what ceremony and what people conducting the ceremony. The image on the right is our required work, but the image on the left comes first in the narrative. 
So what are Lady Shock and her husband Shield Jaguar up to in the panel on the left? What does this ceremony represent? What mythical event does it commemorate? What does this ritual produce, as seen in our required work on the right? How are both works typical of Mayan friezes? What do these sculptures contain in combination, usually? What work from an earlier unit has a similar theme and content to the lintel on the right? Hint, what do you see in the top left frame? What are characteristic features of this architecture? What do these works have in common? Think about a common function. So theories about this work are just that. They're theories. Archaeologists are even still squabbling over which culture created this effigy mound, while Native American groups squabble over which modern-day tribes can claim descent from and or affinity with the mound builders. So what was the likely function of this large, elaborate work? How did it tie in, we think, with astronomy? And what was not found inside the giant snake, although they were found nearby? What was the name of the room set aside for ceremonial gatherings circled here? Neither of these pyramids is a required work, but you need to be able to identify which one is Mayan and which one is Aztec. What kind of narrative does the stone tell? And what earlier works in our course might tell a similar kind of narrative of a fight among the gods? Why was this temple located where it was? Where was the stone placed on the temple and why? What is the likely purpose of the portion of this work that's circled in red? What is the significance of this work's materials? What is the significance of this city and this building within the city? And what animal did the city supposedly represent? How do we know from Inca portions of the building on top that this was an especially important Inca building? I'm including a huge hint. What else originally indicated the building's importance and got those conquistadors really fired up? What Inca architectural conventions do these walls employ? Hint, you need to know what the term ashlar masonry means. I talked about it in my opening lecture, and I also talked about it when I introduced Great Zimbabwe. What do the materials and technique of both of these works signal about their purpose? What does the wide variety of patterns in the tunic signal about the wearer? What was the presumed function of the stone on the bottom left? What work from an earlier unit had, we think, a similar function? What materials are used in this work, and how did the artists acquire these materials? What was this work modeled on? How was this work experienced? Did it make any kind of music? That's a big hint since I didn't think the College Board question I'm referencing was entirely fair. What earlier work from our course is also painted on this kind of material? That is animal skin. Keep in mind that paper did not become an important art medium in Europe until the Renaissance, although East Asian and Islamic artists used it much earlier. What technique did the artist use in addition to freehand painting? It's discussed in the Khan Academy essay. Why was this subject matter chosen, and how is this work organized visually? What do these works have in common? There are several possible answers, but hint, one of the answers involves the long arm of the law. What were the artists trying to accomplish for their own culture, and why? What had happened to the Puebloan pottery tradition? What work from an earlier unit was produced using a somewhat similar technique? How did the artist reference the ancient Puebloan past? Hint, think about the technique they used and not just the images. So these two works appeared together in a series of image-based questions. What do they have in common? Hint, think about the functions they served and the functions they did not both serve. Why was this work created? Why are there so many splashes of red? What are the figures having fr hanging from the clothesline on top and what do they represent? And now we move toward the 20th century and the home stretch.